What's going on, everybody? This is Afro Think Tank. I have a thought on my mind, and I kind of want to do a follow-up on the video that I did when I was talking about how I'm getting tired of black men, you know, embarrassing and basically talking trash about our black women, you know, for the, in front of the whole world, right? And I just want to elaborate on a, a few points, you know, as I've been talking to people in the comments section who do not agree with me, and they think it's okay for men to, you know, bash women on the internet for the world to see. Now, this is what I want to explain to men, all right? Because it seems that our some of our men forgot how to actually be men, right? And I've seen this in actual relationships where you see two young you see two young people they get together, right? And the man, you know, because a lot of boys are growing up without their fathers, so they don't have a good example of how a man is supposed to be towards a woman, right? And if they're raised by their mother, they tend to uh, slide on the side of, of acting like a female, right? Being argumentative, always fighting. That's why all the thugs, all those thugs and stuff, you know, all oh, you stepped on my shoe and all the fighting in school, all that, all the chaos in our communities is because we have men who don't know how to be men. They don't know how to use their masculinity, you know, at all, right? They're operating with feminine energy and, and people think that's toxic masculinity but in actuality it's feminine energy because they only know how to be females because they grew up just watching their mother you know who who usually that generation was already messed up you see we're suffering from this is the result of the conditions that we've been put in you know and, and so i don't really blame us all individually it's the conditions we've been put in and our family has been broken so our men don't know how to act like men and our women some of our women don't know how to act like women right so you're having two feminine energies battle each other. And we all know female. Well, we all don't know. That's why I'm making this video. Now, what's my qualifications? I've been married for 15 years successfully. How many people can say that? How many YouTubers, you know, who, who, who give this type of advice? And the thing is, I'm not a manosphere dude. I don't really dive into this. But I can say one or two things because, like I said, I got 15 years of marriage to a black African-American woman who is a fourth generation Nigerian. But she's very, she's definitely an African American woman. All right, just part, she's part. Like her father's mother's side is uh, fourth generation Nigerian, or you know, father's side from here. For, I'm well, you know, African American, original FBA for all intents and purposes. What I want to explain to you is dealing with women, right? It's like dealing with a wife, right, and or girlfriend, right, as a man. And as a man, when you utilize your masculinity, you got to understand how to operate with your masculinity towards your opposite, your, your female energy, right? So you have to understand that the female energy is chaotic. It's strong and it's chaotic. Women operate, operate on emotion. They don't think the same way as men do, and they're not supposed to. They're the nurturers, right? They're the ones who use their emo their, their intelligence is within the emotional spectrum, which is just important, just as important as the males who operate on logic, right? Logic is not more important, more important than emotions, but men operate on the logical spectrum. Women operate on the emotional spectrum, even though they have the capability of operating logically. It's not what they naturally do because they're not built to do that, right? They're built to they operate. They have a they have a job in nature, right? And we have a job in nature. Logically, we're supposed to figure out how to go hunt that beast kill it, bring it back alive, and feed our families. The female is supposed to be able to nurture, hold a baby, nurture, and take care of, and nurture that masculine energy, right? So when a man goes out and deals with the harshness of life, he's supposed to find a partner where he can go back to who has that feminine energy, who can reinforce that he's doing that for a reason. Somebody who can recharge his masculine battery, you understand? So that's what our, our females are supposed to do. But understand the female spectrum is way more chaotic, Right. And us men operating on a female spectrum is a problem because we're too strong. We're too big and deadly to be operating on that emotional spectrum. That's why you got these big, giant male fe feminine men getting out here, getting shot because they don't know how to act during situations when they're dealing with the police, when they're dealing with other males, when they're dealing with other females. That's why we see young couples where the man doesn't have a never had a father figure and never had an example of how a man's supposed to treat his wife. And they get together. Usually it happens when they get pregnant and they have a baby and then they have to deal with a third, a third individual that starts to take their attention. That's when the relationship breaks up because the man is arguing with the woman like a woman. 
You can't meet a feminine in you. A man cannot meet a woman on the emo and battle her on the emotional spectrum. That's because a woman, all she's going to do is amp up. If you try to battle your woman, you try to out argue your woman, out scream your woman, out disrespect your woman. She's going to come at you and she's going to continue to drop nukes and bombs on you. And it doesn't have to be rational because she's not thinking rationally. What she's thinking is I'm going to destroy you because you're trying to destroy me. It's all emotion, right? Men don't, uh, some men don't understand this. That's why you got people like Sotomayor, right? I mean, what was that? Tommy Sotomayor, Tommy Sotomayor. He is a really big feminine man. Everything about him says female energy, right? So he goes out here, he disrespects black women because he gets his feelings hurt by women, right? He's gotten his feelings hurt by women. So he decided he's gonna continuously hurt females' uh, feelings, right? By coming online and making a career out of disrespecting black women in front of the entire world. He'll go in front of white people, Asian people, Spanish people and disrespect his black woman. That's how far he is into his feelings. He's not masculine at all. He has no stoicness at all. And anybody who follows him and all his minions are basically duplicating that female energy, right? So what I'm telling you guys, if you learn how to if you learn how to utilize your masculine energy, and by using that masculine energy, you need to be stoic. Happy Thursday. Welcome back to On the Shoulders of Giants. And of course, you know, we are in the Dean's office with Dean Rodney Smith, a.k.a. Heavy Hooks, giving you these heavy thoughts. And um, overall, we're here looking into the work of Dr. Tommy J. Curry, and we're linking Dr. Dr. Curry's work with the video that you just seen of the gentleman expressing his views on masculinity these days and in particular black masculinity these days and how he believes black men disrespect black women through the social internets and we're going to get into that and and get into the link between Dr. Dr. Tommy Curry because um Rodney sent me a uh, an essay or some research that Dr. Tommy Curry did and it's linked to the black male image and i think it works well with the video that we have so uh so rodney why why did you feel like we need to get into some of this uh, dr tommy curry for those and for this is for those who don't know about dr tommy curry i think this is perfect timing because i don't know if you saw it but you see the wicked witch of the west cam newton get into that uh scuffle today yeah, I saw that. I saw so that, that kind of links to what we're talking about, too, because I highly doubt somebody would do this to Drew Brees or Peyton Manning. So we're talking about this because too many people think that the black male can be constantly disrespected, which means that lowers his value and opens him up to senseless murder and danger and imprisonment, all because this image of the black male has been tarnished. And disrespected and i'm sick of it because i'm sick of seeing my friends brothers cousins uncles be sent to prison be hurt be murdered and we got to talk about it and try to come up with a plan to change this so so that's why yeah because um looking at the video um he comes out with buzzwords and sweeping allegations with no uh evidence of proof um so overall we're not going to sit here and act like that there are no black men who get on the internet and disrespect black women we're not going to do that of course because we know um fresh and fit and people like that you know they do what they do um mm -hmm. we don't support those type of men but we do know those men exist um i've watched this whole his whole video so we gave you all six minutes of a whole 20 20 minute video of course you know do 20 minutes we'll be here all night but um this first six minutes gave you a good gist of what he's talking about in this video and one of the uh, uh one of the things that i caught from him is one that black men is the tone of black men are the fault of everything that's wrong in the black community two black women are not to be held accountable for their actions three black women um they are women so basically it's it's almost like he's reducing women to children thank you totally you know? agree. and so since he's reducing them to children it's okay for their behavior 
to exist to for the bad behavior. And, and another thing is he made a sweeping generalization of black men and you know making it seem like most black men behave like this. And if you go and I put the link to that whole video in the description, but if you listen to what he's saying in the whole video, it's it seemed like it's a most black men thing versus a small bit of black women who have undesirable behavior. Mm -hmm. And once again, it's another person poking at the black male image seem like for clout or to get his views up and things. And it's like, why, why is it okay for black men, especially to feel like that they can punch down on other black men to get their notoriety up? That's what I'm, that's why I brought up the Cam Newton thing. Why else would this is, this man is, was the MVP of the NFL. How dare somebody treat Cam Newton like that? So if they'll do him like that, just imagine what they're doing with, to ordinary black men on the street, just a regular dude. He's nothing to these people. Yeah. And, and like you said, the, the man in the video, I don't think him and Umar understand that they're actually belittling little uh, black women. Right. They're belittling their intelligence. Right. Like, like you said, only a child doesn't have to be responsible for their actions. That's ridiculous to say that these women, all they can do is have emotions and they're chaotic. And then he contradicted himself because he said they're supposed to be calm, caring, and nurturing. Well, that's the opposite of being chaotic. Yes. He said that they're supposed to be able to recharge our masculine battery. Well, you can't do that if you amping if you, up. If you're chaotic, right, right. There's no way, I, I, right. I just didn't like that. Right, yeah, he's, he's, on, he's on the whole thing of, uh, I'm assuming he's alone. The, the the mindset of because men are the leaders or supposed to be the leaders, then men are responsible for all the ills of the community. And it's our job to get our women in line. And see, this is this is a conversation that we've had uh, in our breakdowns and Pat brings this up all the time, you know, talking about followership versus leadership. And we, we always look at leadership, but we never look at followership. Thanks. You know. First of all, to, to you know, in order to be a leader, somebody has to be willing to follow you. But there has to be will there. That person has yep. to be willing to follow and then willing to cooperate with you, especially if you want this collaboration to to be successful. You know, totally and so agree. if we're at odds, if we're fighting for power, then we can't be successful, right? Yep. So. I mean, and, and um, yes, there are, once again, there are some some men on the internet who are, you know, doing some wild stuff to the way they talk about black men and black women. But um, one of the points he brought up later on in the video, if you watch the whole thing, um, he was talking about, he, he hit on the point of, well, yeah, I know some of you are going to say, well, black women have been doing this for over 50 years, but yeah, basically alluding to, yeah, but they're women, it's okay for them to do that. That's, you know, that's why I ended up the stoic part. You know, we're supposed to be stoic. You know, stoicism is not something that's just reserved for men. If you actually study stoicism, you know, human beings, adults can practice stoicism. And I think it's, it's, it's high time for us to, um, once again, stop treating women like children, start looking at them like children, stop talking about them as children and treat them as adults. Especially, you know, if you, if you are, if you are an adult, we need to treat you like an adult. You should have adult accountability. But the, the just the idea of you know black men are the we're the root of all the problems. Um, <laughs> it's we we have to fix the unruly woman. And once again, going back to what you said, it's like disrespecting women and their intelligence. So you're unruly because you don't know how to be nothing else but unruly. Like so, how how am I supposed to leave that? Okay. This is no way. <laughs> so, <laughs> and go ahead. I was just going to say, too, I, I think that there's too much emphasis put on stoicism because the definition is to be able to endure pain with no feelings and no emotions. That should be a small part of our lives, especially how much right. uh, mental health is important to human right. survival. I don't think that we should say we should always just be stoic. Because that means you're bottling up everything on the inside. You're denying a lot of you. Like men and women need to emote. We need to let out these emotions. We should not allow some. Because then you're just opening yourself up for more uh, yeah. pain and torment and torture. Because you're going to be stoic. So, yeah. 
it's like we're robots and we're not humans and we're not capable of of expressing the full range of human emotions and exactly. you know shut up and take it that's yes the just shut up and take it and then like no we're not doing it like like um, no no smart man that want to help live a help a healthy long life would do that like right. i'm not a I'm not a gladiator right you no know, totally these, these are not the times that we in but it's that it's that 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 image of masculinity. Um, <clears throat> I thought it was funny that he said he was qualified to speak on black masculinity as a whole because he was married for 15 years. <laughs> like, I thought that was funny too. <laughs> okay, so I've been driving a car. I've been driving cars for over 15 years, so let me fix your engine. That's right. basically what he said. You've been in the car for a long time, man. Go ahead, come, come fix my transmission too. I should look, come on, man. Why wouldn't you look? I've been driving cars forever, man. I, I know about cars. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, but you don't know about the internal combustion engine, though. You know, and being married does not give you an automatic qualification for masculinity. If so, shoot, my daddy got you beat. <laughs> Why would I listen to you when I got I, my homeboy Sam C? He's been married. For a long, way longer than 15 years. He'd been with his wife since they were 17. <laughs> so why would I listen to you? Right. Fair enough. Uh, so 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 let's tie this in to Dr. Tommy Curry. Um right. so which which article or and I'm throwing this to you just to give context for the viewers. So which article did you send me from Dr. Tommy Curry? I sent you the um hold on, what's the name of it? Hold on. He's dang. he's he's a when he's not Richard Rice account of black male vulnerability in the Willie McGee. And so why did you choose this particular article? I chose this one uh, because it, it talked about uh, the black male image and how it how the black male image is one of. A person that can only be the perpetrator. Therefore, he's always the monster. Uh, and he, he never can be a victim. So right. everything's always his fault. That connects directly to what we've been talking about. Right, right, right. Yeah. It's the it's a skewed idea of masculinity and the image of the black male that makes uh, black men an easy target to talk down on. Yep. You know, because, um, you know, the thing is, like, like the gentleman, like, and the video was getting that well we know black women have been talking talking trash about black men for 50 years like we know that but y'all can't disrespect black women and i thought well give us a definition or, or an example of what you would consider disrespect that's what i i we needed that you know are you talking about just black men talking about their experiences with black women or are you talking about black men blatantly disrespect black women right because, because you know that image is well you can't say anything to black women you can't respond especially to the ones who are blatantly you know doing what they do to black men to talk down on black men it's like you can't say anything so right and, and what what i wrote from the article is that um when our women do this openly it devalues us more and it makes people outside of the black community feel more comfortable doing negative stuff to us, like imprisoning us or murdering us. Because right. if your own women don't value you, then why should other people? Right. And so what was interesting in the in the article, he talked about uh, Willie McGee uh, and another gentleman, um, Mr. Fairchild. So William, William McGee and Mr. Fairchild, because they, they stories were parallel. Um, William McGee was accused of, and we're going to use, going to say graping for the YouTube okay. algorithm. Great. William McGee was uh, accused of graping a white woman who they had had. She has been forcing herself on him for over two years. Yep. And, and so that, and remember he made the distinction between that and uh, Emmett Till. Right. Right, right. Um, because it was 
on one end, if a black man is even caught looking at a picture of a black woman, he was hung, he was lynched. But if, uh, on the other hand, uh, that made black men vulnerable to the advances of white men and white women. And so Willie McGee is vulnerable to the advances of this white woman and she's forcing herself on him for over two years. She would, he was her handyman and she would call him over when she needed things fixed. There's one particular time her husband came back home when they didn't expect and he got caught and she claimed grape. Uh, Mr. Wright, the other story, uh, Mr. Wright was a cook looking for work in a time where black men, the jobs were scarce for black men. He found a job, at, but the job was for a cook and a, and a, and a domestic worker, but they, they wanted that person to be a black woman. So Mr. Wright portrayed himself as a black woman. The society basically sent society emasculated him, portrayed himself as a black woman, um, and worked in this house. When he got into this house, start working in this house, the wife of this house warned him that, hey, when my husband gets drunk, he likes to grate people. So uh, the husband came home drunk, tried to grape Mr. Wright, and they got into a tussle, and Mr. Wright ended up getting shot. And the thing was, well, Mr. Mr. Wright put on a dress to come in and try to attack my wife because in both in both situations, the black both black men were emasculated and vulnerable but we're seen as the perpetrator, perpetrator because you're it's always the black man's fault that's basically what they get at. yeah always the black man's fault uh and he said that black men since slavery has been trying to escape this caricature uh of their image and, and it's hard to do and it's hard for modern people to reimagine the black man as one that can be a victim which is why we always find ourselves victim because nobody right. ever sees right. us as right. the victim. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're the victimless victim because our victimization is seen as something like, well, how can, how can he actually be victimized? You know, going back to the sound bite, it's always Jermaine's fault, <laughs> you know? And that's, and that's funny that, 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 that woman actually got online and said that because, you know, we had always been saying, well, it's always our fault. It's always our fault anyway. Then when she said like that, kind of put the name on it was well, always Jermaine's fault. So that rhetoric and that that narrative is is continued over and over and over. The victimless victim, right? Which is sad. Say that again. That's it. That's sad to be that the is, that victimless is victim. And, and people got to realize it's simple. Like there are resources out there, and there's people fighting for these resources. So white people have created this system to get rid of certain competitors. Black men are competitors for their resources. So they've created this system to cut down the competition. And one of those resources for them is white women so they can reproduce themselves. Well, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, it was something else I was reading. I can't remember what it was, but it was talking about how uh, white women, um, drugs, and uh unproductive leisure was used to distract the black man from mm. where, where we need to be um also give us a a coping mechanism from being demasculated because mm. they can't going back to, and you can link this article to the isis papers as well okay because Dr. it goes and talking chris about wilson. uh francis chris wilson um she has a part in her book when she talks about how um the black man, like the baby boy, the baby boy theory, the black man, the black male cannot be a man in America because the white man occupies that position. Just like mm -hmm. the black woman, the black uh, female cannot be a black woman because I men cannot be a woman because the white woman occupies that. So but she can still be a girl and we can still be boys, but mm -hmm. we can't be men and women because that's a power structure. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because we are, uh, under the thumb of white supremacy and we're demasculated, we're gonna to continue to be demasculated. We're gonna to continue to be um, the victimization of those who have more power than us. Right. And, and that's why we have to be made into the monster so that the people, the white people in the society feel comfortable killing us because that's what you do to monsters. Right, right, right. It's easier to eliminate somebody when they, when you view them as a monster. Correct. 
And so, but that, remember that goes back into what happened to black people as a whole, um, especially during slavery and, and, and the, the period of America, of the medical apartheid and just how they was experimenting on, on black people, just eliminating black people because, Hey, we use the concept of racism to say that they are subhuman and because yep. they're subhuman and we view them as that it's easy for us to eliminate them and black men still we we're, we're still seen as that even though we may have access to their world but we're still seen as subhuman especially by the ones who practice white supremacy so the, the, again that to me that's why claiming we should be stoic is dangerous because there's already a stereotype that we have denser bones that we don't feel as much pain that we're monsters so to act like nothing bothers us, they're going to further replicate this heinous activity towards us. Right, right. Because he was also, uh, he said several times that if you just tell her, just say stern and stern way, hey, stop that. Don't do that no more. She's just going to stop. I'm like, well, that doesn't work for an unruly person. Exactly. Like, give, me, give me an example of an unruly person where you can just say stop that. And she'll never do it again, or he'll never do it again. Like that doesn't work. I don't care what gender a person is, that doesn't work. Facts. So what what are you talking about? You can just go say this and say that. No, but it's also him, him also emasculating black men. Yes, totally agree. You know, he's in this tier of black men because he's a married black man and he's talking like this, and all the rest of the black men who don't meet his specific qualifications are lesser black men. So, I, you know, I need his I need an overall definition, um, but I, I also needed him to, to explain more and go deep more on what he was talking about, not just be so surface level and use buzzwords. Yeah, you're right, because he never went into like what he meant by the disrespectful stuff black men are doing or how we're bashing black women. Right, right, right. But it's once again, us being easy targets, though. I can just throw these things out and I can repeat narratives that have been. Uh, said over and over and over when I, because us a lot of people who believe these narratives and look how many people whose channels are taken off look how many people getting all these views which is punching down on black men and, yeah. and once again you know we are not robots right so if, so if I get into a disagreement with my woman um of course I'm going to find the best course of action to to rectify it and so we don't have continue to have these issues but as a as a human being i'm allowed to express my emotions and sometimes i may it may not it may not be all under control but i'm allowed to do that as a human being though i thought so i just thought yeah no i agree uh and i think this it spills over into the treatment of our boys too i want to i want to read this part from the article okay. it says uh for many americans black men and boys embody sexual savagery because the black male is imagined as a rapist and therefore as never vulnerable to violence, as not capable of suffering, and as only existing forever unchanged, bestial, like an animal, like a beast. So to me, this means our boys are in grave danger because no woman can harm them and no man can harm them. Right, right. And, and that's dangerous. That, and that goes to that vulnerability that he was talking about because yep. He used those two scenarios of Mr. Wright and Willie McGee because they both were seen as the perpetrators, even though they both were victims, going back to the victim this victim. Yes. You know, um, we don't, uh, one thing black men don't do, we don't carry around uh, or parade our victimization. We don't do that. Um, but it does need to be acknowledged and it does need to be um, talked about and studied more about how black men have been power well <clears throat> we've been powerless since we've been brought here so yep. that has always let, left us vulnerable to the attacks of both white men and white women or anybody else in society who fears to attack us whether physically or attack our character yeah no i agree and it, and it, it's sad to me that so many other black males are willing to quickly attack other black males and not come to our aid they, they, they believe in these negative tropes about black men. Uh, right. So talks like this is needed because, again, if they do that to Cam Newton, they're going to do it to us. Our yeah. Own people. Yeah. But once, once again, though, like we don't 
Cam Newton is not seen in the same light as uh, Peyton Manning. Because, um, you know, exactly. Shannon yes. Shannon Sharp said the same thing. Um, Cam Newton is not. Um, Lamar Jackson is not. Um, a lot of black quarterbacks are not seen in that same light. But we do lack respect for each other and ourselves in our own community. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a big thing that has to do with it. Now, I thought one thing that was – I agree with what Shannon Sharp said. And I don't know the whole situation of Cam Newton. So – um, but I'm, I'm going to say this based off the conversation that Chad and Shannon had. And I agree with what Shannon was saying, especially when you're dealing with younger men. Because um, Chad was like, he would, when he's in camp situations, you know, he's a he's a talker. So he's going to be talking junk and you have him right. he's a talking junk. And I get that with his, with his personality. But I agree with Shannon once again is, I, we understand that's your personality, but a line has to be drawn of we we are the the adults y'all the kids and we're here to help y'all and yes we can we can have some type of friendship but we can't set the stage of we talk and jump back and back and forth if you want certain levels of respect to be set right. because we you know we're dealing with a different generation of children who were raised different and so the idea of how we how we even look at respect and talk about respect is totally different these days than it was in the past I agree. I, I do want to bring up something though that people probably forgot. Uh, I'm in Indiana. Bob Knight put hands on players. We never saw an, an adult come crack Bobby Knight in the face or nothing, right? Because of the respect of not only him as a coach but his color, his race, right? I highly doubt. So Mike Davis took over for Bobby Knight. If he put hands on a player, white or black, someone would have hit him. Something would have happened. He wouldn't have been viewed as Bobby Knight. And, and just yeah. coming up in Indiana, it was so many coaches like him with, with whether it's his mouth running at a player or putting hands on players and nobody would think of touching a white right. coach like that. Right, right, right. And so that's that's something else that people really have to take into account. Um, this the white coaches not being uh, retaliated upon physically is, a, is another example of um what goes the the larger picture of things? There there aren't a lot of attacks on white men's uh, character the same way it is on black men. Of course, the the rhetoric is you know white men are the perpetrators of all patriarchy and white supremacy. Uh, that's one thing I love about this article too, though. Is yes, white men are are are, are seen as that, but it's it's. Their, char- their overall character isn't bad because you have multiple versions of white men that you can see. But it also, that rhetoric is also dangerous because it seems like white men are working alone and white men never worked alone. White men were working in conjunction with white women to oppress black people. And so, But white women were not seen as perpetrators because their main victim were who? Black, black. men. Yep. Right. So that's so that's how I, I think that's how it was easier for black women to align themselves with white women when it comes like in the 60s, 50s, 60s and 70s when it came to feminism and all these different movements. But they didn't see the white women as a perpetrator. They saw her as a fellow victim, but not <laughs> understanding her main target were black men. Yep. And once again, like this, dude, like this dude, his main target is who? Black, black men. men. Cause it's always our fault. Jermaine. <laughs> <laughs> it just, but that just kills me. That it's always our fault. We we have a hundred percent of the blame of what goes on in the community because this idea of leadership, even though we've never, 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 never been in true leadership position within our own community, because our our society is. E- egalitarian, more egalitarian, matriarchal than than anything. So, where is the outright leadership like they expecting from like a West from white culture? These other cultures that that it hasn't been like that in Black America. Black men has never right. had that time because that comes from self actualization. And when have we self actualized as a people? So, since Black men have never true been in true leadership positions. That means 
if black women never decide to work with black men, we'll never be able to fix this thing. But we also will never be able to fix this thing if people are listening to dudes like this and making it seem like the majority of black men are, are out disrespecting women, talking down on black women and making it seem like black women are the worst things ever. That's just not true. I'm not so, trying to make it seem like it's the majority. Is it a, a good number of black men? Yeah. Because they know that you could come up two ways on the internet, talking down on black women or talking down on black men. Yeah, no, I agree. And, and that type of rhetoric from him, from Dr. Umar, it, may, it just makes it harder to get those type of negative behaviors that black women exist to be reduced because they'll have this visceral reaction to us providing a critique, not trying to bash, but a critique to make our community better. They're not going to hear it if all they hear is, hey, you shouldn't be critiqued at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's 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 crazy because it's especially from from the gentleman in the video. It's that that the idea of you know they should not be critiqued at all because they're women, but we can be critiqued because we're the men, and men are supposed to be critiqued. No, adults, right? Adults. Adults. adults, and again, it does our community no good if you dump everything on the black man. We're just gonna further get murdered, further be separated from our family, further not be there for the community, and the the the, the, the process just perpetuates itself. So we right. need each other. Right. We're not right. here to bash either one. Right. But to say everything is on us further damages our community. Right. 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 And, and you know, um, Shahar Razad Ali when she wrote her book, The Black Man's Guide to Understand the Black Woman. Um, early, late 80s, early 90s when it came out, she was chastised and, and kicked to the side because of her uh, analyzation of the black women of the black woman and how she is in relation to the black man. And, you know, she was seen as a, somebody who was just out here just putting out propaganda talking down on black women, trying to you know, make black men sound good. Then years later, we see that, okay, she wasn't off she wasn't off so what we basically what we found out is both black men and black women had some work to do to get better but right. we can't once again we can't go out just making it seem like we're black men are the only ones that's the problem in the community because we aren't the only ones causing the problems and we're not the only ones who have the obligation of fixing the problems and you know what i just thought about something that idea creates apathy for the imprisonment and death of black men if, yeah. if if people believe that a majority of the problems are black men's fault, then they'll it'll create some type of apathy when bad things happen to us. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, well, you see them; they out here acting foolish anyway. So, hey, you know, see, right? Why not? Why not eliminate them because they are here acting crazy? He said that. How disrespectful that comment was that black men are out here getting murdered because they don't know how to act. That that. I can't believe people ain't jumping on his channel for saying that. That's disrespectful to us. Because I mean, there are a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of it's a lot of bad behavior that we see from from both sides. But we we know that uh, women are not here getting murdered for their bad behavior. They're not. They're just not. Not not no. not like that. We're not saying women aren't getting murdered or nothing like that. But we know. We and know all the about. implicit bias um, studies show that where they have people like simulating shooting stuff and they shoot women regardless of race they they won't shoot women <laughs> but black men are the most shot in these simulations yeah yeah and and you know because in, in that in that sense it's just like it's just just you just your you're gonna meet your end just based off of your behavior you know um <laughs> There, there are a lot of ills in our community. There's a lot of stuff to clean up. There are a lot of black men who are on the wrong path and doing, and, and a lot of black men who are behaving like our enemies. But stop right. broad back, stop broad brushing that picture, making it seem like that's the majority of black men. No, man, that's the majority of the content that you consume on your social media that is constructed by the algorithm which you create from what you consume. Facts, because the majority of us love black women. We want to be around black women. We want to love on black women. Right. Like when I grew up, man, we all of my people was talking about some black women, man. Nobody's asking them. 
That's but, it. But what I also noticed is that most of us viewed ourselves as the problem in every relationship. And it wasn't yeah. until the BGS and the Dr. Tommy Curry's that I started to wake up and be like, hold on, I can't be the cause of all these problems. Let's see, yeah, I had some I had some good OGs in my life. So my, my mindset was a bit different. I just I didn't know about a lot of the concepts that they had in a more of an academic way. Um, okay. Or or I wasn't used to hearing a lot of stuff that we would hear in um widely. I would hear from cut from a couple of the OGs that I had because they they grew up different. So theirs okay. were well, I just say this for lack of better words, they didn't grow up in simp culture and we didn't grow up in simp culture. Now, did I I'm I'm from the South. Yes, chivalry is in, instilled in us from the get. I open doors, yep. I walk on the outside, I do all the chivalry stuff, you know, I do those things, but uh, I was not I was taught to be a gentleman, I was not taught to be a doorman. And then and then being taught how to be a gentleman, like I, I I'm I'm giving my my woman my hundred percent. I yep. give my community my hundred percent, but I'm not gonna be a doormat and we're not gonna be the targets of all the the negativity and the ridicule that 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 happens to the black community. It's not you're not gonna make it seem like it's all our fault. That's not gonna happen. Can't do that. Yeah. So so are we are we fifty we like we've been like we've been saying on the channel, we're fifty percent of the blame. And our women are fifty percent of the blame, but it's it's on a hundred percent of us to fix it. Yep. <laughs> right. Let's just look at it like that. Let's just really look at it. That's like a good that. way of looking at it. And um, what what he said one thing, another thing. Oh, he said uh, religion killed the black family. That is not true at all. Christianity and Islam did not kill the black no, family. Government assistance in these. And feminism and all these different movements around that time, coupled with government assistance, coupled with the coupled with racism, coupled with redlining, coupled with the loss of jobs for black men, yeah, all those the things. Industrialization, right? Taking all those things. Out of schools. Yep. All of um, that. You're right. Um, my man Patrick has a his book, The Chasm. His book, mm -hmm. The Chasm, talks about those things. It goes into detail of those of the different things that caused the breakup of the black family. It was. It was planned. It was it was structured to break the black family. It had nothing to do with religion. Remember, black people were the most religious people in yeah. America at that time, and we had strong families. It was government assistance and all these government programs and all this government interference that helped break us up. Slavery right. didn't even break us up. Right, we was together, <laughs> literally. I'm gonna keep saying this. I believe in mass, or I believe. There are more of us who love each other and care about each other and do not hate each other than we see on the internet. Facts. I'm gonna keep saying that. Facts. So, so let's just let's keep lifting each other up. Let's stop listening to people like this. Do um, because I would rather him, um, especially if he's talking about black men in America, he's not even in America. Right. He's not. So, <laughs> so get into these communities and help these black boys and help these black men become better. Let's just stop sitting on our couch talking junk and get into the community and do some stuff. Hey, man. That's why we're here in the dean's office throwing these heavy hooks at y'all, man. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, remember Black Family Institute. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you go over there and like those videos. Watch the videos. Support, support, support. Jump in the comments. Let's grow this channel. Let's get this channel going. Um, yeah, so thank subscribe. you again, man, getting me to pass 500 subscribers. Hey man, no problem, man. We're gonna keep pushing. We're gonna keep pushing. We got we're gonna get you monetized. We're gonna get everything out. Um, so because that's that that's that's those are the things that we need to help us help our community. When, when we have resources, we can better help our community. Yeah. So being able to look at it like that. So uh, keep doing what you're doing, keep putting out that content, and we're gonna keep dropping these things over here. So yeah, you too, bro. Yes, sir. Happy Thursday to y'all. We'll see y'all later. Peace.